in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. Ladies and gentlemen, before the curtain goes up on the Shadow's latest exciting adventure, let me say this. I know that every one of you who owns a car is looking for a tire that will give you the greatest protection against skids and blowouts. And you'd like to get that tire without paying a price premium, wouldn't you? Well, I'm going to tell you about a new kind of tire that will stop you quicker, safer on wet, slippery roads than you've ever stopped before. This amazing tire is the new Goodrich, spelled G-O-O-D-R-I-C-H. Goodrich Safety Silvertown with the Life Saver Tread. And when Goodrich engineers developed this new tire, they certainly did a job. For instance, you all know what a windshield wiper does to a windshield. Well, motorists, that's exactly what the new Silvertown Life Saver Tread does to rain-drenched roads. Because the never-ending spiral bars of this tread actually act like a whole battery of windshield wipers. They sweep the water right and left. They force it out through the deep grooves. Thus, a dry track is made for the rubber to grip. And that means when you're riding along on wet pavements and have to step on the brake, you'll get the quickest non-skid stops you've ever seen. Believe me, there's nothing like a Silvertown stop to make you feel secure. And when you realize that Silvertowns are also the only tires that give you the famous golden ply protection against high-speed blowouts, is it any wonder this new tire is called the safest thing on wheels? Have this life-saving tire put on your car before it's too late. There is no extra cost. The Shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Using advanced methods that may ultimately become available to all law enforcement agencies, Cranston is known to the underworld as the Shadow. Never seen, only heard, as haunting to superstitious minds as a ghost, as inevitable as a guilty conscience. The Shadow's true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, The White God. Gentlemen, the Navy Department has today asked me to give ship owners this message. We have today abandoned our extensive air and sea efforts to trace the missing yacht owned by Rudolf Hoyt, millionaire scientist, last reported in that region of the South Pacific, which has in recent months come to be known as the Graveyard of the Pacific because of more than 15 disappearances of ocean vessels in that area within the past two years. Uh, Admiral Champion, we ship owners beg you to continue your investigation to clear up this mystery of the South Pacific. All this publicity of missing ships, especially the publicity about the Hoyt yacht, has ruined our Pacific shipping. Yes. Why, we can't even sign up a crew to ship on our boat. I tell you, Admiral, this mystery must be cleared up. At once it gentlemen, must be up. gentlemen, the Navy is just as anxious as you are to solve this mystery because of our naval operations in the Pacific, but we can't find a single explanation. May I make a suggestion, Admiral? Oh, what's that? that? Don't that? bother to try and see where I am, gentlemen. You can't see me. Well, who are you? I am the Shadow. The Shadow? The shadow. The shadow. You're that, that invisible man who's always helping the police and always working against crime? Quite right, sir. I do have the power of invisibility to conceal my being and my motions when assisting authorities in maintaining law and order... And peace. Can you help us solve this mystery of the graveyard of the Pacific? I think that possibly I can, gentlemen. Well, well, I just a moment. You know something about it? I have a strong suspicion that the graveyard of the Pacific is really the work of some individual. It's incredible. Oh, Maybe. It isn't logical that a group of modern ships, each one manned by an expert crew, equipped with the finest marine devices, should disappear unless they were made to disappear. And with a little help from you, Admiral... I think I can prove it. Well, what do you want of me? First, a fast cruiser to take me down to the South Pacific. Second, an airplane to cruise around among the islands. But you insist you must stay as the shadow? I'm sorry, sir, but my identity must remain unknown. Besides that, I feel that I will be of greater value to the venture if our enemies cannot see me. Very well. I think I can arrange it through Washington. 
How many will be in your party? A young woman named Margot Lane will be your visible passenger. I will be with her, but you will not see me. You will advise the crew of my invisible state as the shadow and tell them to obey my voice, even though they cannot see me. Anyone else coming? No, just Margot Lane and the shadow. Well, well, I, I hope that he's successful. I, I certainly hope that he's successful. Who is it? It's the shadow, Margot. May I come in your cabin for a moment? Certainly. You may lock the door now. I'm inside. Now we're all alone? Yes, it's safe for you to become visible now as Lamont Cranston. Well, how do you like being an honored guest on a Navy cruiser? It's very exciting, Lamont. But how do you expect to find the graveyard of the Pacific? No one knows where it is. Well, that's what I've got to find out. How? I'm not quite sure yet. Is there any way I can help? Yes, Margot. This cruiser will put in at one of the South Pacific Islands tomorrow. I'm going ashore. I may be gone a day or two or a week, trying to get my information. I'd like you to stay close to the short wave set. The moment I have any information, I'll contact you, please. As soon as you hear from me, do the thing I ask you to do at once. <laughs> Margot Lane, stand by for orders. Have the commander of the cruiser prepare a seaplane for immediate takeoff. I'm leaving this island where I've been for the last few days and returning the ship at once. I believe I know what happened to the missing ships. You will board the seaplane with me as the shadow. Where is the seaplane taking us? taking us to an island on which there lives someone the natives call the White God. A witch doctor told me about him. The White God? Yes. From the witch doctor's description, it's obviously a man who has managed to overawe the ignorant natives with elemental experiments in chemistry and physics, which he passes off as magic. Violet! Violet, what made the plane lurch like that? I don't know, Shadow. There it is again. Something's tugging at the plane. Hugging at the airplane? Yeah. But the motors have gone crazy. I can hardly keep them going. Pilot, we're descending. Yeah, we're being pulled down. Look, we're heading toward that island. You're right, Margo. Look, the wreckage of boats crashed on the rocks, deserted in those coves. This must be... Yes, Margo, the graveyard of the Pacific. Oh, hey, look at the wings of the plane. The rivets are being torn out. Yes. There goes a white ring strut. We're diving into the sea. Pilot, can you level the plane off? No, no, I, I can't. Level off or we'll all be buried in the plane at the bottom of the sea. Uh, okay, get ready to jump. We're going to hit the water. Ah! All, all present at the count of four. Uh, I'm here, Shadow. <coughs> count on me, too. You leveled off, so we landed on top of the water instead of beneath it, pilot. Yeah, I... I'm afraid for a moment I couldn't make it. Well, I, I suggest we make for the island there and pay a visit to the white god. Yeah. So this island is the graveyard of the Pacific. Wreckage of those boats convinces me that it is. Look at them, piled up on the rocks, some of them out there in the cove. Yeah. They all look deserted. Yes, I don't see a soul. What I can't get is what happened to the plane. It, it was like a magnet pulling us. What might be more truth than poetry, who knows? What do you mean? I have an idea that this island is a huge magnet. A natural magnet, you mean, because of rocks and minerals? No, a man-made magnet. Are you kidding us? No, I don't think so. There's no natural magnet strong enough to attract ocean vessels and cripple airplanes. But I... You see this hill in back of us? Yeah. Rises up like a sugar cone. I was noticing it from the air. There's a huge hole in the top of the hill. This must be an extinct volcano. I have an idea that it's been converted into a magnet. A magnet pulling ships to their destruction. Well, I'll be... Listen. Crumbs. Natives. Yeah, sounds like a big time going on the other side of that hill. Yes. This calls for a little exploration. 
Margo, you and the pilot wait here. Hey, Nix, I'm not going to miss the fireworks. I'm going with you, too. All right, if you insist. If you go around the other side of the island, come up through the woods. I saw it in the plane. We don't want to stumble into any cannibals. Okay, let's go. Let's hope they don't try to make a banquet off of us. Here. Yeah, we can see them all right from here. There they are. Boy, just look at those natives. Must be several hundred of them. They're all painted up. Judging from those fires and that feast laid out on the ground, they must be having some ceremonial. Look, at the top of the hill. Well, I'll be... Where did he come from? The white god. He came right out of the top of the hill. You're right, Margo. Remember I told you that that hill was an extinct volcano. That means that inside of it, running down through it, there's a shaft through which the volcano used to erupt. He merely made his appearance by coming up through that shaft. Say, the natives seem to think he's a god by the way they're acting. Exactly. He's made them think that he has some magic power by which he comes up right through that hill. Look! Holy smokes! The natives are carrying a white man up the hill to him. That white man is Rudolf Hoyt. Hey, look. They're setting burning torches to the guy's body. Margot. What is it? They're, they're going to sacrifice Hoyt. Oh. Sacrifice him? Yes, a human sacrifice to the white god. Oh, oh save the heaven. Oh, stop putting those torches against me. Stop putting those torches against me. Ah, oh. Mr. Hoyt. Oh, oh, Colin. Lloyd Colin. What are you doing here? Since being dismissed as your assistant from the university, Mr. Hoyt, I have become a god. A god? Yes. A white god here at the mouth of this volcano, able to perform miracles of magic, even to pull great vessels and liners from their courses to sea to my very feet. You recognize that magic, Mr. Hoyt? Recognize it? Of course I recognize it. It's the whole new application of the principles of magnetism which you stole from me. Harsh words to speak to a god, Mr. Hoyt. You must be punished for them. Burn him. Apply the torches to his body. Oh, for heaven's sake, Colin, stop him. Oh, stop him, Colin. Oh, stop this torture. The fact that oh, you are sailing within torture. range of my magnetic oh. devices was sheer oh. fate, sheer coincidence. Oh. But I am delighted to oh. have had the opportunity oh. of receiving you and your oh. colleagues. Oh, what have you done with my daughter? With the others from the yacht? You will join them presently. Oh, where are they? In oh. the very bowels of this volcano, my friend. You mean you've thrown them down into the crater? Precisely. Oh, you fiend! Ah. You... Ah. I will not attempt fiend. violence, Mr. Hoyt. The natives ah. resent having their guard abused. And now I kill two birds with one stone. First, I remove you and become oh. sole possessor of the secrets of my magnetic theory. My theory, you mean? And secondly, I satisfy the thirst of my subjects for a sacrifice. Seize him! No, no, no! Colin, oh, for mercy's sake, Colin! Throw him oh. to the altar oh. of the white god! Oh. Throw him down into the sacred volcano! Colin! Colin! Throw him in! Colin! Colin! Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, how will the shadow defeat his enemy this time? In a few moments, we'll continue this exciting story. But meanwhile, motorists, remember this. The road you travel on may be perfectly safe when dry, but deadly enemies when wet. Yes, beware. Roads may be skid traps when wet. Don't take chances, motorists, especially when you can now get a tire that will stop you quicker, safer on a wet pavement than you've ever stopped before. And that tire is the new Goodrich Silvertown with the Lifesaver Tread. The never-ending spiral bars of this lifesaver tread really go to work on a wet, slippery road like a whole battery of windshield wipers. These bars sweep the water right and left. They force it out through the deep drainage groove. This means your tire actually has a drier, safer road surface to grip. This means real protection against the hazard zone of motoring. Think of the added security for yourself and your family from this road-drying tire. And then remember that Goodrich Silver Towns also offer you golden ply protection against high-speed blowout. Is it any wonder that this new Silver Town is called the safest thing on wheels? Don't buy any tire until you've at least seen this new Goodrich Silver Town. 
Don't buy any tire until you've ridden on this new tire and discovered what it means to be saved by a Silvertown stop. Yeah, Shadow. You slip, you're done for. No foothold on the side of this crater. Do you think this is the way the white god came up out of this volcano or on this ladder? I'm sure of it. I can hear water below us. There must be some entrance from the sea into the bottom of the crater here. What he undoubtedly does is come into the crater from the sea, then climb the rope ladder to the top. The natives think it's some hocus pocus. Uh, the primitive mind is eager to believe anything that savors of the supernatural. Wait a moment. What is it? Wires. Look. There are dozens of them embedded in the rock. The whole crater must be wired. I wonder for what? This must be the way he generates the magnetic force into the hill. Through these wires. You see, I told you, this whole crater can be converted into a huge magnet. Yeah. I see the wires right here. Look out, don't touch them. Oh. oh. Hang on to the ladder, Margot. Hang on to your life. You too, pilot. I, I can't hold on, Shadow. Something's pulling me off the ladder. Have you any metal on you at all? Yes, my flying belt. Then, then take it off, quick. I can't get it off. It's caught it off. Oh, Lamont, what happened to him? Oh, please, come out of the invisible state. We're alone now. I want to see you. I'm that, that flying belt, the magnetism in the mountain attracted it. it. It's dashed him against the wall to the hill. Oh. His touching the wire set the whole magnetizing mechanism going. Margo, we're inside a huge, monstrous magnet that'll pull everything metallic for miles around to destruction. The mud, the, the vibrations are shaking me off. I, I can't hold on any longer. There's water down below. Dive into it, Margo. Maybe we can find a way to swim out of here. Dive, Margo. All right, Lamont. Good. I'm following you. Well, there must be a... Must be a way to get out of here. Out to the sea. Better find it before the mountain crushes us to death, too, with its vibrations. Oh, vibrations are stopped. Yes, the white god must have turned off the power. Lucky for us, he did. Oh. Oh, Lamont. Did you hear that? Oh. Yes. Yes, it sounds like a woman. Oh. Look, Margo, there she is, hanging on that ledge at the side of the cavern. Let's swim over and get her. Oh, oh, oh she's more dead than alive. We must get her out of here. All right, I can manage this border all right. Oh, oh. I've got her. All right, Let's take her someplace where we can bring her to. Hear a story. I believe in you, Mr. Shadow, although I cannot see you. Yes, I'm Rudolph Hoyt's daughter. I, I was supposed to be sacrificed like all the rest, but I landed on the water and it broke my fall. Tell me, my father, do you know what whether Is he? Yes. I'm sorry to say he's dead. Oh, oh father. Miss Hoyt. Miss Hoyt, as long as that fiendish white god exists, that monstrous magnet at his command. Not a soul, not a ship for miles around is safe. He must be destroyed. And I need your help to do it. I'll do anything. Good. Wasn't your father engaged on some research with new applications of magnetism? Yes. Had he completed them, magnetism would have taken the place of motors and steam engines and things. I thought so. Did he have any enemies in the world? Only one. A man named Lloyd Carlin, who used to be his assistant. Then, the white god is Lloyd Carlin. He knew about your father's work in magnetic phenomena. He tried to steal them. I remember that, Miss Hoyt. Are you willing to help me try and destroy this monster? Yes. Anything. Good. Tonight, then, we'll show the white <laughs> god and his natives a brand of magic. Magic? Tonight, Margot, you... Miss Hoyt and I shall perform the magical feat of reviving the dead in a burst of glory. Careful. Careful on the steps of the ladder, Miss Hoyt. I am, Mr. Mr. 
shadow. We're almost at the top. Good. Mr. Mr. Shadow, will you tell me why you wanted me to wear this bulletproof vest we found on the yacht? It's possible Carlin has a gun. And that vest might come in handy. Oh. And remember, a wooden boat is waiting on the shore by the woods. Run for it when I tell you. Yes, Shadow. Good. I imagine Margot will be directing the searchlight from the yacht onto the top of the hill any moment now. There it is now. See, the light shooting across the mouth of the shaft? Yes. And we're ready for your return from the dead. Step out of the shaft onto the rim of the crater. All right. Look, the natives have seen me. They could hardly miss you in that searchlight. Now, walk down to that ledge. I'll be with you, although you and the natives cannot see me. Yes, Mr. Shadow. Remember, let me do the talking. A masculine voice coming from a reincarnated woman should prove quite a shock. Hello there! Your voice has them all afraid. Just the effect I anticipated. Bring your white guard to me, heathens. Let me challenge him for what he is. A vile and murderous imposter. Will the natives understand that kind of language? So, I think so. Carlin hears me. That's all I'm interested in. Where is this white guard? Come here imposter and be exposed before your master be exposed for what you are here he comes now mr mr shadow remember don't be afraid miss hoyt no matter what he does greetings mr carlin what nonsense is this nonsense yes your voice miss hoyt yes i lost my voice temporarily when you threw me down into the crater but when it returned it was the voice of a man. I'm in no mood for joking. You're hiding in the shadows and speaking for Elise Hoyt there. Who are you? Where are you? Tell me or I'll shoot. A waste of bullets. Shooting into the shadows, Carlin. I'll hit you. You think you can shoot invisibility? For shame, Carlin. You, a great scientist. Whoever you are, you can't stop me from destroying Elise Hoyt here as I destroyed her father. Come! Come, all of you! The girl must be destroyed in the sacrifice to the white god! Throw her into the crater! I say, come and destroy this woman! I am afraid your power over the natives is slipping, Carlin. Then I'll throw her into the crater myself. Oh, no. Keep away from her! Knock me down, will you? I'll get up you. off the ground, Carlin. God shouldn't get so close I'll, to us. I'll kill you wherever you are. I'll look, kill. my friends, look. The white girl returns from the earth where you threw her. Why? Because the earth is angry with the white god. He rejects his sacrifices. The girl is your new and only god. No! Uh, I, I am the white god. Watch, I'll show you with the fire from my gun. Watch and see how much of a goddess she is. You see, Carlin, even gunfire can't destroy her. It must. Careful, Carlin. Your native disciples don't like to be disillusioned about all your claims to power. I shan't disillusion them. You already have. First, Miss Hoyt returns from the all-destroying sacrifice. Then your gunfire fails to phase her. What other magic have you to hold your followers? I'll show you. Shadow, he's running up the hill. He's running to the top of the crater. Start his magnetizing device. We must stop him. I'll show you who's all powerful here. Shadow, Shadow, if he starts that magnetizing device, we'll all be shaken from the crater to our death. Then run for your life, Miss Hoyt. Run to the boat. Go through the woods. Oh, but he's already at the top of the crater. Run, run for your life. I'm going to stop him if I can. I am powerful, my invisible friend. 
when my magnetic mechanism shakes you off the hill to the rocks below and crushes you. <laughs> no, no, I touch the wires and... I'm right beside you, Colin. I'm right beside you. You shouldn't have wasted so much time talking if you wanted to escape me. But you're too late. I started the magnet working. Rudolf Hoyt would have revolutionized all industry with this invention. Balls of steel would have taken the place of dynamos and turbines. Iron threads would have supplanted motors and engines. It was all my dream. My dream. But you, you concocted it all as an instrument of death and destruction. Used it to awe the natives who did your fiendish bidding against the unfortunate souls you lured here. The natives are coming to kill you, Carlin. They'll throw you down the crater. But you will die too, all of you. The power of the magnet increases unless it is turned off. It will vibrate the volcano until it crumbles to pieces. Do you hear me? You will die too. <laughs> you killed with the rest of them when the volcano crumbled? Evidently not, Miss Hoyt. But you were up there with Lloyd Carlin. I heard you talking to him as I ran for this boat. You heard my voice, but I was only a little way behind you. But how? By the simple trick of ventriloquism, Miss Hoyt. Carlin thought I was standing next to him in the shadows when his own invention destroyed him and those unfortunate natives. Then that's the end of my father's invention, Shadow? Yes, Miss Hoyt. With your father and Carlin gone... We must wait until another mind can conceive it again. Until then, the secret must remain entombed in the volcano of the White God. You have been listening to a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> all the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Thank you.